Hello, today I'm going to talk about how to do localization both within the Unity Engine Editor and within code. So what I'm starting with here is a simple UI that has three buttons that say Start, Settings, and Exit. And the first thing to do is go to the Package Manager and install the localization, which is not installed by default. It's a simple and fast install, and once you have that done, you're ready to start doing some translation. And now that the localization package is installed, we need to actually add the languages that we're going to use within the editor. So we go up to our project preferences, and under localization, the first thing we have to do is actually create the localization settings. It'll ask us where to save that. I typically save it in a subfolder, but for the sake of speed, I'll just put it wherever. So now that we have that, we need to add the languages we're going to support. So you click on the Add Locale, and check whichever languages you want to add. In this case, I'm going to check English, Spanish, and Portuguese. And then once those are added, it'll ask you where to save them. And there are a couple of other settings to check to set the language that's going to be uh, set on startup and how to detect what language the system has for a user. Typically we leave this at the default, but uh, setting the project language to whatever language your primary language is is generally a good idea. Or setting it to English so that that comes up as the default language. Now that we have that set up, the next thing to do is to go to the language localization table. And we do not have one to start with, so we need to create And it'll ask us what we want to call it, and we save it. And once that's been saved, we're ready to add translations to our project. But I'm going to close this window for now. We'll come back to this later. Now we're going to show you how to actually translate the text on these buttons we have here. The first thing we do is add a component, and it is a localize string event. And anything we want to translate the text on, we have to add this. And then add a link to the actual text, even though it's on the text, the uh, control, and then its text member has to be connected, or this text will never localize, no matter what we set the translation to. Now that we have that connected, we select the table that we want to use, which is the name of the one we just created. And we can either look for a string within the table. In this case, there are none, so we just create a new one. And we set the text string to start with. That's typically the English string that's used as the string key. Then, of course, we actually have to set the English translation for that key. And here we'll also set the Portuguese and the Spanish translations for this. Now that's one way of adding strings to the string table. Now another way is to actually go in and edit the table itself by clicking the new button. And just like we did in the localized string event, we add the key and then the translations for each of English, Portuguese, and Spanish. Now you notice that the first entry is already there because we added it through the uh, localized string event. So now I'm going to connect the localized string event to the second button. And I'm going to select the string table. And this time, instead of adding an entry, I'm going to search for an entry and select it. And then, of course, I need to connect the Text Mesh Pro UI elements and select its text member to update. Now the third button, I'm going to add the localized string events to, but not actually uh, select any text. I'll click next to the button and you'll see what happens when it cannot find text to translate. Now I'll save and run the project and you can see that the translations will run. And as I change the language, you can see in the top right, there's a drop down that lets you choose languages. The strings for the buttons will automatically update to whatever language. 
And then in the bottom one, where we don't have an actual translation set for it, it just stays as the original text. And that is a different behavior than what happens in code, and we'll see that a little bit later. And I'll just go ahead and finish translating this last exit button for completeness. And now that that's working, uh, let's move on to translating in code. First thing I'm going to do is create a very simple C sharp script. And give it a moment to load up in Visual Studio. So just to prove that the file runs, I'm going to add just a debug log statement that says localization started. Then I'll save that, and then go back into the editor, add that script to the canvas. You can really add it anywhere, but because it runs on start, that will just print to the console to prove that it's running the code that we're editing. And then I run it, and we can see that that message was printed. Great, now we're ready to actually go in and translate some things in the code. Start by adding Unity Engine dot localization dot settings, which is a very important namespace for us to be able to actually translate things. And then I define a string and call localization settings dot string database dot get localized string. And it wants two arguments. The first is the name of the string table. And the second is the actual string we want to translate. So let me just look into the editor to double check the name that we gave our string table. And I will enter that in. And then once we've retrieved the string, I will print it to the console. I'm also going to try translating a string that we do not have in the tables, just to show you what happens when we do that. So I'll also log that. Save that, let it compile, and then go back to the Unity editor to run and we should see a translated version of this string. We're currently set to Spanish, so that's what we will see in the console. And the next one shows us an error rather than any actual translated text. Now you'll notice that it's different from just leaving the text alone like it does in the UI. So that can be a problem if you're setting your button text in code. So I'm going to write a little function here to do some error handling and just default back to the base string when it cannot translate. I'm just setting this as a public static string so it can be used from anywhere. Typically you would put this in a utility class that's that's public and maybe import it via using static. Now this will actually make the code that we're writing a lot shorter too, because now we're just going to call get localized string with the text we want to translate, and it will automatically do the right thing by handling null or no translation found entries for us. And as an added bonus, it will log to the console so that we can search these messages to see what we have failed to translate. And I'll just finish this up, let it compile, and we'll run it in Unity to see the results.
Now, as you can see, we can search the logs in the console to see what hasn't been translated, but we see the translated text and our helper method has simplified the actual writing of the code. And that's really all there is to it, getting started with doing localization within Unity. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching.